Hello, it is Tuesday, April 6th, 2021. So today, uh, to start off this stream, uh, we're going to play a game that someone pointed out to me. So apparently there is this game, it is guessthiscode.com. You can try to guess what programming language things are. I wanted to do, I wanted to do a little bit of that because I think I'd actually be kind of good at this. Uh, it's not really that difficult anyway. Uh, but anyway, first thing, actually let me refresh this because I already know this is Python. Let me just refresh this really quick. Uh, so let's think about this. Uh, this looks like this looks like well, actually, this doesn't look like this looks like SQL. Just the number of statements. Yeah, probably SQL. Yeah, okay, fair. Uh, all right, this looks like Perl, but it's definitely not. Um, Objective C, no RM spec. Yeah, it's a spec file. <laughs> Print. Wow. Okay. Um, that could be Python. Uh, this looks like some kind of, this must be a Docker file, right? Yeah, it's a Docker file. I've never used Docker, but that looks like a Docker file. This could be Objective-C or something, I think. No, this looks like a make file. Yeah, it is a make file. <laughs> That's why it looks like one. Uh, is this a uh, constant? That looks like Go. Okay, this doesn't look like type, well, actually. No, this could be TypeScript, couldn't it? I actually don't know. This looks like, huh, I actually don't know. To me, this looks like TypeScript because it has the constant, but it could also be, well, actually, so this looks like it could also be JavaScript. Therefore, I would say that it's probably Swift. No, it is JavaScript. Really, that's not TypeScript. Okay. There are pink network-like lines on my hard-boiled egg, and I'm a little concerned. Yeah, I'd be concerned about that, too. Um, you probably should just get a different hard-boiled egg. Really? That's crazy. Oh, import pandas. That's Python. <laughs> it's always Python. A uh, function that looks like JavaScript doesn't. Oh, no, this, is, uh, this has n, so it must be Lua, right? Yeah, that's Lua. Okay. Uh, let's see, it counts whatever, uh, is this, this must be Python, right? Yeah, it's Python. All right. Uh, that looks like, uh, can't be Java, that couldn't be Haskell, it's got to be JavaScript, yeah. All right, yeah, I would get a new hard-boiled egg if I were you. <laughs> def is always Python. Well, is it, is, is Python the only one that uses def? I actually don't know. Uh, so var, this looks like JavaScript because we have constant, we have let, so it must be JavaScript, yeah. Okay, that looks like CSS because it is CSS. Um, as far as I know, okay. Uh, this has def and end, so this must be Python, right? Oh, look at that, it's not. So Python isn't the only one, so this must be require, is, is require a Ruby thing? Does Ruby have end? Huh. I ooh, I don't know. This is not this is not Haskell. Uh, this has got to be Ruby, right? The only reason I say Ruby and not PowerShell is because oh yeah, puts that's that's Ruby. Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah, so apparently it's a Ruby thing too. That's what I thought when I played this. My high score was thirteen fifty. Okay, that's fair. Uh, this looks like PowerShell. Actually, no, this looks like R. This looks like R. Oh, really? It's Ruby. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, now you know what to be. Yeah, okay. I'm trying. Uh, def with no return. Would that be Kotlin? No, Kotlin is fun, so this must be... Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. Okay, no... Right, Python doesn't use end, right? Okay, fair. Oh, wow, that creative name for a language. Yeah, fair. Um, CSS? Yeah, it gotta be CSS, right? Uh, so def with no end has to be Python. And so Ruby must use end, so Julia. Oh, wow, I wonder what language this is. It's gotta be, <laughs> I wonder what language this is. <laughs> I don't know, could it be JavaScript? You think it's Objective-C? I don't know, man. Could be Ruby. Oh, uh, no. I'm going to go with Julia. 
for no specific reason. Um, anyway, this is going to be Python, right? <laughs> Anything diff is Python to me? No, okay. Well, it has def and nothing else. It's got to be Python. Uh, prefix operator. Ooh, interesting. So this has operator overloading. Uh, so that must be... Wait a minute, what? Post fix operator for plus plus. Uh, ooh, I actually don't know what this is. T of type numeric, because this looks like uh, in out T. Uh, this looks like, hmm, this looks like Swift to me. I've never seen Swift, but I'm going to say Swift. Yeah, it's Swift. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. I wonder what this is. Could it be Dart? Well, actually, I guess it could be Dart. Well, actually, I don't know. Does Dart... I know that Dart has, like, a web thing, right? But I'm pretty sure this is HTML, right? Yeah, it's got to be HTML. Okay. Huh. Uh, so let I... Hello, those lines look like this company sold as fertilizer. Uh, ew. Sounds gross. Console.log... Or this egg at least, yeah, that sounds gross. I'm guessing this is JavaScript, right? This looks like JavaScript. Let's call it JavaScript, yeah, okay. Uh, class human, uh, age equals whatever. This is gonna be like Kotlin or something, right? I guess this could be C++. Uh, I don't know how you'd tell the difference. Oh, ES6 Babel, so it has to be JavaScript. Oh, it has to be JavaScript, huh? Okay, fair. Uh, function start level. So this must be probably, not, uh, well, I guess this could be JavaScript, right? Oh, JavaScript. Yeah, it's a JS file. Fair enough. What is the difference between C sharp, C, and C? Uh, so C is more of a hardware level language. Uh, C is built right on top of C sharp, or sorry, C is built right on top of C. It's like, C++ is basically just like C with a bunch of extra nice stuff. Like C, C doesn't have object orientation, it's strictly procedural. Whereas C++, also there are languages on this website I've never heard of. Perl, Perl is, okay, let me finish explaining C and C++. So C++ is C with object orientation, and then C Sharp is like the Microsoft version of Java. Uh, if I remember correctly, C Sharp originally used Java as its, like, it, it was heavily related to Java early on. And I think they just basically took the JVM and made it their own. That was my understanding of it. Um, so Perl, Perl is a terrible, it's a mishmash of, like, it's a mishmash of sed, awk, and, like, bash. It's just a terrible mishmash of languages. But a lot of people like it for some reason. I think because it combines so many things under one, but I personally don't. I've tried it and I've never been able to use it, so maybe that's just my bias, so I just don't like it. <laughs> type def, no. <laughs> just just no. Um, so type defs, that's got to be... Or no, type of. Sorry, type of, no. Okay, well that's even better. Uh, new number, this looks like JavaScript, right? Am I crazy? This looks like JavaScript. I'm gonna go with JavaScript. Okay. Uh, app dot routes. This looks like definitely looks like some JavaScript. Uh, no, actually, this looks like Python. Uh, I'm gonna call it Python. Oh, JSONify. Yeah, Python. Yeah, you're right. Integer dot max value. That looks like Java. So if it's that close to Java, then it's probably C. No, function value. Okay, no, it's got to be JavaScript. Yeah, okay, fair. Uh, constant arrays, that. Console.log, got to be JavaScript. Okay. Function. Oh, I think this. This must be PHP, right? Oh, my God. All right, yeah, PHP. All right, it's so a constant. So fat arrow functions got to be either TypeScript or JavaScript. I think it can also be, can't be shell, I don't think. So return type of args undefined. 
I cannot actually tell if this is JavaScript or TypeScript. I don't know how I can tell the difference. Um, uh, I don't know if this is... Uh, so wait a minute, regexes. I don't know... Hmm. Oh, I can't tell the difference. Um, oh, it really sucks. All right, let's just go with you. Oh my god, damn it. All right, fair enough. All right, that's that PHP code again. By the way, you don't have to mute a website without sound. Oh, yeah, I just mute stuff. I do mute, I just mute stuff like by default, just in case. This might have also been a YouTube browser tab that this came up in, so I don't know. I think it's Python? Yeah, I think it's Python as well. Yeah. Class, uh, ooh. What are you? Uh, I'm going to go with TSX. Uh, well, well, actually, no. This might be... Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if PHP has classes. I'm going to go with TSX. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that is. I assume it's like TypeScript or some kind. This looks like CSS, right? This is CSS, okay. Oh wow, CSS selector, gee, I wonder what it is. Also, since, well, actually, never mind. Never mind, I was gonna say something, but I'm not. Um, Swift, right? Because, Swift, right? No, that's JavaScript, really? Really, without the, without the semi, oh, well, no, without the semicolons, really? Huh, okay. Oh, SQL? No, Dockerfile, right? Dockerfile, yeah. Uh, this has got a, this might be. I actually, what is this? Oh, this looks like PowerShell, actually. No, wait. No, this is SQL, never mind. I was thinking SQL, but I didn't see SQL immediately. Okay, CSS selector, yeah, yeah. Void main run import package. Oh, wow, I wonder. Uh, I was like, print, huh? Oh, wait, Lua isn't here, so it's Python, yeah. That's that's the way I was thinking about it, too. Uh, public list model. List parameter. That could be Java. Uh, not equal to null, so yeah, that definitely... Look, oh my god, all the null checks. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why? I mean, given, oh yeah, it's got a finely block. That's, oh my god, yeah, it has to be Java. No alternative. Ooh, what's this? All right, given that there's like 10 billion lines of whatever nonsense, it has to be C++, right? Yeah, STCPP has to be C++, right? Got to be, yeah. All right, list of integer equals new array list. That's Java. Uh, def count has to be Python, right? No, it has to be Ruby, right? Uh, ew. has to be Ruby, right? I guess it could be shell, right? Given the syntax highlighting, I would actually think that it's, I'm gonna go with Ruby. No, it's shell. Okay, so shell has def as well. I was gonna say, given the syntax highlighting, it's probably gotta be shell, right? Uh, this has gotta be JavaScript or HTML or Perl? No, oh, wait, HTML? No? JavaScript? Wait a minute, what on earth? Oh yeah, this has dollars, so... Huh. I guess this is technically JavaScript. Fair. Uh, function... Uh, so we have jQuery, so I'm gonna go with JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, that has to be Python, I would assume. Python, yeah. From that, import that, got the Python, uh, import, import. Uh, given that there are no uh, taste, uh, test face recognition, JSON, got to be Python. I think that's Python. Yeah, okay. Uh, test def match, also got to be Python, right? Python. CSS selector, got to be CSS. Uh, is that... More Python. This has got to be JavaScript because it's jQuery. Uh, this has to be C++. Is that right? Using namespace? Yeah, namespace standard's got to be CPP. 
Yeah, there we go. Mm, JavaScript? That's what I'm thinking. Gotta be JavaScript. Uh, this site really loves Python. Well, it also might be the case that there's just a bunch of Python, like like most of the scripts submitted might have been Python, or maybe there's just a lot of Python in whatever they're sampling. This looks like Java to me, or that Spring framework. Yep, that's Java. All right, um, imports so probably Python, right? If we're seeing this, but then again, ah uh, no, this is not. Ooh, ballerina. Okay. Uh, do we have any? It takes scripts from GitHub. So yeah, there's probably a lot of Python on GitHub. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, so let's see what this is not. So C doesn't have this syntax. That's just not C. This has got to be ballerina. And the reason that I say that is because this is not Java syntax. This is not C syntax. I highly doubt this is shell syntax. So I'm going to guess this is ballerina. Yes, there we go. I've seen a video by the person who made it. I'll find the video later. Ah, okay. Okay, class something implements that. Oh wow, I wonder what uh, I wonder what uh, syntax this is. It's C sharp, of course. That's what it is. Uh, this is HTML, of course. Uh, import React from React. Oh wow, I wonder what uses React. Probably not JavaScript. Uh, HTML then? Yeah, HTML. I guess that could have been PHP. I shouldn't have clicked that so fast. Like this syntax looks like uh, TypeScript syntax, but I think this is technically JavaScript. Uh, I guess it could be Ruby. Well, no, I don't think it can be Ruby. Got to be JS, right? Yeah. Uh, FCN model. Face. Oh my God. Is this another, like, what model is this? FCN. Yeah, it's Python. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what what this model is. FCN model. Huh. Whatever. Python. Uh, so private void. Okay, that looks like Java. Oh wow, that's interesting. Or maybe this could be C sharp. Actually, no, this is C sharp because that's a um, that's yeah, this is C sharp uh, because that's a C sharp thing. Package, that looks like a Java thing already. Um, public class HW <laughs> homework one. Oh my god. Uh, uh, okay, so what is this? This looks like Java. I'm going to guess this is Java. <laughs> Int variable. Okay. Oh my god. Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, okay, right. That's That makes sense. So I read that as is is even for a second. I'm like, wait, that's not what that is. Okay, yeah, it's Java. All right, so it's CSS, obviously. Uh, return. This might be. <laughs> it looks first line. <laughs> also <laughs> Java. Yeah. Uh, this might be. JavaScript. Can you just wait a minute? Can you just return like, just. HTML from JavaScript like that? Because I would actually say this looks like per or um, I'm actually scared to click JavaScript because I don't know if this is JavaScript. I think okay, so it's not C. I know that. It's also I don't know if it's Objective C. I'm gonna guess that it's not Objective C, and I'm gonna say JavaScript. Okay, I've never seen that syntax, but fine. Um, I guess it is JavaScript. Okay. It didn't look like the others. Uh, oh my god. Oh, what is this? I have a unit challenge for you. What is this Roblox? Is that what this is? This reward dot reward? What on earth? Reward dot reward dot reward underscore item. What on earth? This, this is so bad it looks like it's C sharp. You have to make every single script in one single line, but that's not really that's not really a challenge because the problem with that is that that's just obfuscating the code, right? Like, I can make one, yeah. I'm, this is definitely C sharp because we have the fat arrow functions. We have um, uh, what is it? Fat arrow function. What was the other thing? Oh yeah, for var and item. Yeah, obviously this is C sharp. 
to just do it. Well, the problem is, is that it's it just obfuscates the code. Like it doesn't. It's not really a challenge. It's just kind of a waste of time. Uh, so this has to be TSX, right? Uh, TypeScript. This has to be TSX, right? I don't know what TSX is, but this looks like TypeScript, and I think it's related to TypeScript. All right. Uh, oh, oh wow. I wonder what language this is. Actually, I guess, well, no, I was going to say, there could be an argument that this could be considered shell, but I don't think it, no, it's not. Um, package. Oh, yeah, that, wow, I wonder what language this is, as if I didn't already know. Class solution. <laughs> solution, I like that. A very optimistic name for a class. <laughs> so, two short string exception. Interesting. Oh, wow, interesting. Why would you make an exception class static? That's interesting. Oh, right, never mind, that makes sense. That makes sense why that has to be static. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I, you can, oh, I guess you could throw that as long as it's public, okay. That's interesting, okay. So 1350 colors.js, I wonder what script this is. I wonder what language this is. Uh, let human score, that looks like JavaScript or TypeScript. I wanna say that it's TypeScript. But I think there's an argument that this could be just be JavaScript, right? Um, I'm going to say TypeScript, but I don't know. But I think there's an argument you could make that this is TypeScript or JavaScript. Come on. I think this would compile as a TypeScript program. I'm pretty sure it would. Uh, Okay, so I don't like this. I don't know how you're supposed to tell the difference between TypeScript and JavaScript in this case. Because this looks like it could be either one, doesn't it? Like, hang on. Let's look, let's see if there's a TypeScript playground. Because I'm 99% sure that both of these could, I'm sure that this works as a TypeScript program, right? Die, okay. All right, give me all of this. Prove to me that this doesn't work. That doesn't work. Well, no, that's fine. Also, the weird instance thing you worked. Okay, that's good. These aren't errors. Uh, so yeah, I think it implicitly has any type, yeah. That's what I thought, okay. To the person who made this, this looks like a bug to me. Because either of these, this is both JavaScript and it is both TypeScript. Because this does compile as a TypeScript, TypeScript program. So that sounds like, that. that's a bug. Anyway, I got 1400. So I think that's, do, 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 do. Uh, so you got 1350, I got uh, 50 just above, all right. Also, can we just compare the Gravelbox console to the source console? Well, I mean, it sounds like, so the source console. So yeah, to the person who made this, I think it's bugged. Anyway, so like the source console, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting that that comes up. Like an open source console game? Okay, interesting. Uh, source engine console. Source engine console. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it looks similar, but it's, yeah, I mean, the two look similar, but like, it's just the shading that looks similar, right? Uh, but yeah, it, it's just the shading that looks a little bit similar. Okay, so now that we've done that, what does the source2 console look like? Source engine2 console. Um, 
possibly that? I don't know. Half-Life 2, I don't know. I can't find it. Or is it Source 2 engine? Source 2, um... I don't know what's made in Source 2. Oh, that looks interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Variety uh, releases Source 2. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find it. Anyway, I got 1400 on this. I'm happy. Um, I still think it's a little bit broken. HL Alex? Uh, let's see if it even gives us a console. It, I can't find any images of the console. Yeah. I don't know. Not going to worry too much about it. Uh, so, uh, I just wanted to get this sort of out of the way first. Uh, but now, we can move to some Unity stuff. Did my sound just vanish again? Possibly? Uh, it's very possible. Also, oh yeah, what we can do, we can also do a uh, gravel box. And look at that. Uh, so is there a an updated version of gravel box or no? Is the one that you sent me yesterday the updated one? Ah, it's back. Okay, that's good. Also, where did gravel box go? He went here. I can mess with this. It's very dark actually. Oh, is there a way? Well, I mean, it's dark. We can. I still want to click to make things. I still like. I want to click to actually, you know, place things. Anyway, uh, do the whole script in one line. No updates yet, okay. I mean, the whole script in one line thing, it just... It doesn't make it any harder to write the code, it just makes it harder to read the code. Like, the only reason I don't want to do it is because there's no... There's no, like... I'm trying to think of what to say, there's like no... It would just waste a bunch of time. Like, the semicolon thing at least made sense, right? Because, uh, let's do this. Wait, wait, can you just spawn things outside the, you can spawn things outside the world, don't you know? I don't know if you know that, but you can. Look at that, you can spawn all that stuff outside the world. And it'll be falling forever, for eternity. Do, 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 do. Make stuff falling for eternity, all right. So. <laughs> just make a bunch of rotors. I love just making a bunch of rotors and watching what they do. <laughs> it's just too funny. Also, is there any way to like lock an object? Like, is there any way to like lock an object in place? Oh yeah, you know that it that it can happen. Okay. Just create a bunch of rotors. And then of course we can grab the lights and we can move the rotors around with the lights, because that's fun. <laughs> it's just too much fun to do this. I don't know why. Uh, it just it's like you know, liquid, you know, physics simulation almost. You know, fluid simulation in Unity. Uh, not yet, okay. <laughs> and off that light goes. Alright. So if we just throw a ragdoll into there, what happens to you? Nothing good, okay. Hang on, can we not grab the ragdolls? Oh no, we can. It's recommended that you keep an eye on the child list. Yeah, probably. Oh, that's too much fun. Uh, so do the cubes different uh, effect. It's very interesting. <laughs> so the rotors, I don't know why they're just the funniest things in the world in this game. The <laughs> ground surfing the rotors, yeah basically. Yeah, I don't know why this is so much fun, it just is. I like how the lights just like, oh, I think we've lost that light. Okay, no. It can't escape. 
Is there any reason the lights don't obey physics collisions? No, oh, come back, light. Come back. Alright. Yeah, I've never found the radio, though. It said that it's to the left of the panel, but I don't know where. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been able to find it. Lights kind of do. Okay. So this is zero gravity ragdoll. So they have zero gravity, but they also. Oh, okay. So they have zero g, but. Hmm, interesting. Do you compose them? Yeah, you compose them. Oh, that's too much fun. Huh. They can't move the lights, but the lights can move them. Okay. Lights are kinematic, okay. Hmm. Sort of an interesting game to be made of just like, you know, can you can you move the ragdoll through the lights without touching them? Actually. Radio button will be replaced. Okay. Huh. I think it's actually starting to chug now. Yeah, looks like a bunch of stars. The dev console command. In the dev console have a command, you can just select the radio. Let's try to find it while you can. I don't know where it would be. Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, I've never been able to find it. So that it's to the left of the panel, but I don't know what that means. Or where it would even be. I mean, it would have to be in one of the corners, right? Like, I don't know. I've never been able to find it. It's near the clear everything button. Well, managed to clear it. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find it. Yeah, I don't know. Is it like super tiny? Oh, I see. Okay. So it's like super tiny. Wait, how tiny is it? Okay, I see. It's like it is really super tiny. It's like right there. Okay. Uh, let's create some lights here. All right. Oh, interesting. Play, uh, put the radio there. Listen to the radio's noise. I don't have my headphones um, hooked up, unfortunately. Or I would. Yeah, I would listen to Oh, wow, it's really spinning, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. You can really get some angular velocity on that thing. Yeah, look at that. But yeah, I would listen to it, but my headphones are not plugged in, so I kind of can't. I'm kind of interested in the rotor, though. If I drop a rotor here. Radio is the yogurt with it's banging made with a yogurt cup lid cracking. Cracking, interesting. So what part do I have to actually select this rotor at to actually make it select? There we go. Alright. Hey, it stays put. Nice. Okay, so can we balance a rotor here? Okay. So now... What if we try to put a rotor... No! Ah. Nope. People really do love the rotor. Yeah, because it does something. That's that's the reason that it's so loved, is that it does something. Um, okay, I'm trying to straighten it out, though. And I'm wondering if you can stack two? So I made a Plinko machine with lights. Yeah, I was thinking you could do something like that. Uh, so can we stack two rotors, is the question. Nope, they really don't like each other. All right. <laughs> and off it goes. 
It just they have minds of their own. Also, why is that one light? Oh, okay, I guess that's why. <laughs> Alright, let's wait for it to come back around. Yeah, it just seems to have kind of a mind of its own. Uh, uh, let's try to put that down there. Okay. What happens if you put like a ragdoll above it? The ragdoll gets rotated a little bit. All right. Well, actually, wait a minute. We can probably... We really can't stack those. That's weird. All right. Leave us alone. Uh, you can see what I mean by the leftmost ragdoll. Uh, do you know how to fix the ragdolls becoming slightly transparent when it's dark? Becoming slightly transparent? Oh, that's interesting. Um, it depends on how you're doing the lighting material. Uh, I don't know how... I don't know how you have it set up, but... Yeah, I want to see if I can just get this to be stable. All right. Put you two right next to each other. Good. If we drop a ragdoll on you, what happens? That happens. Okay. Yeah, so you're talking about uh, this right here, how the, how the legs are transparent. Uh, I think that has something to do with the lighting. Use the diffusion material with a regular light pointing at it. So does it, okay, so does it, how does it behave at the edges? Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I mean, I think it could be the fact that maybe the material is transparent. Uh, interesting, so it looks like you have the default uh, sprite here. I think it's actually that the material is transparent even when it's light. You just can't see it. I think that's the case. So I don't think it's a darkness thing. Could be wrong about that though. Um, yeah, I think it's transparent even when it's light, you just can't see it. Uh, and I don't know how you'd really prove that, but is it though? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it, huh. When there's no light at all, they're not transparent. When there's no light at all, they're not transparent? They aren't? Um, yeah, I think that might be true. It might just have to do with the way that the material works, like the, hmm. It might have to do with the scaling. Because I could imagine that. I could imagine scaling being an issue. Yeah, they don't look transparent here. But no, they would have to be... I don't know how the transparency could be affected by the light. That's what I don't know. Like, my theory is they'd either have to always be transparent or never be transparent. Or maybe that's just not transparency. Maybe that's um, maybe that's just like double illumination or something. So like, hmm, maybe because the two materials, maybe because it's two instances of the same material, they combine or something, or one of them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you'd describe that behavior. Seems interesting, though. Originally wanted to limit the joints, but they made stuff boring. Yeah. See, I'm trying to figure out what could be causing this. Um, so it seems like even 
there is a light pointing on them. They're fine. It's just when they're, is it when they're only partially? No. Huh. So whenever there's just a little bit of ambient light. Actually, wait a minute. Is it the case of multiple lights? Let's just take these and then just chuck them away. Uh, no, it's not the case of multiple. Huh. Yeah, I think it has to do with one of them being like partly in shadow, because like right here. Maybe it has to do with the difference between like the midtones and the. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. I don't know why that's happening. Let's. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what you'd call that. Interesting. I don't know why that's happening. That's so weird. I've never seen that. I think it has to do with the lighting, though. I think that's part of what it is. It's like, not has to do with the lighting, but I think it's just a, I think it's just like an oddity of the sprite lighting. Like, just the way the sprite lighting system works is what I'd imagine. It might also have to do with the scaling. Uh, I think that might play a factor. Some engines do have issues with objects that get scaled, and they do do weird things when objects get scaled with lighting. Might also have to do with material, with what kind of material you're using. So is it possible? If I spawn a light, okay. I mean, grab your arm. No, 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 no. You, no, no. You go here, that's fine. Okay, and then I put a light there. Yep, you're, you're now trapped. Uh, you just balanced. Well, no, yeah, he doesn't balance very well, but if you lock his arm in place, he does. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's probably painful. Um, all right, so. <laughs> uh, so terrible. All right. Let's put you here. I don't know why I made the light skin back. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, so if we put your arm here. All right, now let go eat. All right. My excuse is that so that I can have cinematic lighting and stuff. Yeah. All right, so we can put you there. Oh nope, you. You don't like it when we try to do that, huh? All right. There we go. Can lock your arm in place. And then we should be able to grab this. We'll put your arm there. We can lock that in place. Then we can grab these lights. No! You, who gave you permission to leave? Why is the rotor... Why is the rotor harassing the dude? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Get rid of the lights. This trippy effect on the left ragdoll. Uh, oh yeah, the lighting effect there. You've ruined it somehow. Oh, uh -uh. well, we can now give him a friend. Oh, well, we can't have the rotor. Hmm. What we can do. Okay, we can get rid of you. Since the lights are kinematic, we can build a little trap for the rotor. Uh, well, actually, we need to get rid of these. Never mind. Grab the rotor. Look at his head. Hmm. There we go. He has a hat. Now the rotor, now he will be tortured forever. Torture by rotor. How many can we spawn in here before it explodes? <laughs> oh, interesting. Hmm. Oh, man, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. All right. All right, let's clear everything and then let's create like a tunnel full of lights. His head was in the dark while his torso was fully lit. Yeah. Oh, that was the trippy part, okay. 
Okay, so can we can we make rotors flow kind of like fluid? Oh look, we can. <laughs> they flow kind of like fluid. Oh, that's cool. Oh, let's clear everything. Okay, so we could do some cool stuff with this. Uh, so we could make like a little track. I like how the radio doesn't get cleared. Hey, I found a bug. Your radio doesn't get cleared. Clear everything doesn't seem to work on the radio. Well, actually, wait a minute. Did it? No, clear everything doesn't work on the radio. Huh. All right, so we can make a little track for the rotors, actually. And then they can flow like fluid. Let's try that. So can we just make a thing here? Welcome to Gravelbox, the only game where Unity Physics puts you on some sort of watch list. <laughs> yeah, basically. That isn't a bug. So technically, I don't know. It says clear everything. Isn't a radio part of everything? All right, so rotor. Let's see what happens. I think they flow like fluid, though. Yeah, look at that. They do. They flow kind of like fluid. Let's see if we can just get so many of them in here that they explode. There are going to be a lot of them in there. And my CPU usage is definitely going up. <laughs> Isn't the map part of everything? I don't know. It sounds like the way that I interpret it as everything as like everything that I placed. Okay. Um seems to be working. Oh there we go, now it's starting to chug. Look at that. Oh, CPU usage is, is spiking. <laughs> oh, what have we created? <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> now what happens if we put a rag doll in there? Uh, yes. Uh, he's actually getting pushed out through the liquid. That's funny. Uh, or is he just gonna like sit in the bottom there? No, I think they're gonna lift him out. <laughs> yep, he's actually getting spit out with all the rotors. No, that's funny. Oh yeah, it's it's chunking now. Uh, let's get rid of everything. Make Unity happy again. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Add it to the back, but maybe fluid sims. Yeah. Ooh, let's see if it actually. So let's see if it actually seeks a level, kind of like fluid does. But I assume it does, right? Like it probably seeks its own level just naturally. Okay, so let's just put a bunch of lights here. All right. Now, if we just place like a ton of rotors on this side, they should even out if the, if the fluid seeks level, right? That's like how that'll work. See what happens. But I mean, yeah, they do kind of basically do a fluid simulation almost. It's interesting. It looks like there's a leak. Uh, I can get rid of that. Yeah, it is basically like a fluid simulation. Uh, the only game <laughs> where rotors are fluid. Yeah, basically. Let's see if he sinks to the bottom like he would in normal fluids. No, I think, well actually no, he floats. He's, you can imagine that he's like on his back and he's he's floating. No, they're not They're not behaving like fluid. They're, they're piling up too much on one side. Okay, let's pull him down to the bottom. As far down to the bottom as he'll actually go. Actually, let's get him out of there. All right. And let's see if we can get him all the way down to the bottom of all the rotors. Is it really just the fact that rotors move? I think so. Yeah, I think it is. They, they just, they move on their own, and that's the interesting part about them. <laughs> like, they just go flying. Oh, it's so fun. Will he be moved to the other side? I don't know.
Let's find out. Will they? I think his head is broken. Uh, I think his head is just broken. Um, yeah, his head is broken. He's it's trapped inside of his body. That's interesting. Okay, let's see if he naturally gets moved from one side to the other. They're so broken, but not at the same time. Yeah, let's see if he actually gets moved to the other side. I don't think so. I think he's actually going to get stuck right here and just nothing is going to happen. Yeah, I think he's just stuck there. Hmm. Yeah, he's just kind of stuck there. Yeah, I don't think he's moving at all. I mean, it would be kind of funny if there was like an AI for the ragdolls. Like, if they just kind of, like, moved around or something. He broke his neck. Rip Kevin. Yeah. 19... 1984 to 20... No, it was 2021 to 2021. Also, 1984. That's... That's a very specific year. Isn't that the year... Uh, isn't there a book called 1984? Isn't that the actual year in the title? It's 1984. Nineteen ninety-four. Ah, okay. <clears throat> we can we can try to correct? Well, his leg there. Oh, I think this leg is actually just broken. I think it is. I can't actually move it. Okay. So his leg is broken. His arm is broken. His head. Can we unbreak his head? I don't think so. I think it's actually just broken. His official age is 27. Oh. Who is Kevin? I actually don't know. Oh, there we go. We, we fixed his head. Look at that. He's not broken anymore. I mean, he probably wishes he was broken, but, you know, he's not. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. If we put you here. Oh, whoops. I did not mean to spawn a ragdoll. Oh, wait a minute. Can we spawn ragdolls? We can spawn ragdolls inside of each other. Origin square. Kevin is the ragdoll. Okay. We can spawn ragdolls inside of each other. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you can make just some kind of horrible monster <laughs> for ragdolls. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I, I can't actually pick up the... Oh, there we go. It's just a horrible mass of bodies. What happens if we put the mass of bodies in the uh, in the rotor pool? Does it actually separate them? Uh, actually, what we can do is we can just seal this off. Let's see if we can make the rotors actually like separate them. Uh, let's see what'll happen. No, it seems like no matter how much pressure we put on them, they don't actually uh, separate. <laughs> The physics does start to explode though. But yeah, no matter how much pressure you put on them, they don't they don't separate. <laughs> like every once in a while a rotor just flies out. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, oh I think they did I think they did separate. Alright, we can get rid of some of these lights and Yeah, it separated them. Look at that. Separated conjoined twins. Now we have this is horrible mass of bodies. Oh jeez. All right. Um. <laughs> uh, challenge: recreate Gravelbox logo from the trailer or the game jolt thumbnail. Oh, did you uh, like put a bunch of boxes there? Like this is horrible monstrosity. <laughs> like the arm, it just doesn't. I can't tell if that's an arm or a leg. I think that's an arm, though. Uh, that's so great. I love that. All right, uh, clear everything. Uh, let's try to do... Let's see if we have a light. All right. Well, let's have our ragdoll. Uh, let's have Kevin here. Let's grab Kevin. Let's try to create, like, a chain. Like, a, a chain using the ragdolls, because I think we could. Okay. 
So let's have Kevin here. No, no, no. Come on, come on, Kevin. No, no. I want, I want your arm here. Uh, whoops, that's a rag doll. That's not a light. That's a rag doll. That's not a light. Okay. Have a rag doll, and now let's get a light. So I want to see if it's possible to create like a chain of of rag dolls, and like you know, kind of swing it around. I wonder if that's a thing. I bet you could though. I bet if you wedged enough of them into each other. All right. So let's just stick you there, and you know, stick you there a little bit more. All right. So rag doll. If we try to spawn you inside of... Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, no, that didn't work. All right. I'll try to spawn you inside of Kevin like that. Yeah, no, it's not working. It's not getting, like, actually tangled up. There we go. Now they can get tangled up. Okay. So you, if we spawn your torso there. All right, cool. Now if we spawn one here, do you get tangled up? Yeah, okay. Now, it looks like only the torsos can get tangled up together. So if I spawn one here, and then one here, and then one here, do these separate? No, okay. Oh, uh, wait, they might be separating. All right, no, okay. So we can just keep spawning them, like, in succession like this. And I think it creates a chain. Yeah, it creates a chain. Oh, it broke apart. Darn it. I, yeah, I think... I think we can create, like, a, a chain of ragdolls. Like that. They keep pushing each other outside of their torso, so I think, yeah, it keeps breaking the chain. It's unfortunate. Oh, that broke the chain, too. Alright, so maybe... Maybe the way to do it is to spawn them... Are you part of the chain? Yeah, you're part of the chain. Okay. So I think if you spawn them, like, right here, I think that's enough to get them... Yeah, okay. Ah, it's not quite enough. Alright, I think the way to do it, though, is that you have to, like, extend their arm, and then spawn one. I think if you can get, like, inside of a joint or something, like, inside of one of their joints, I think it actually locks them in place. So here, maybe? Uh, nope, that doesn't work. I don't know why <laughs> these four people. Yeah, yeah, poor ragdolls. <laughs> Try to clip them together like this. I don't know why. I don't know why these two got clipped together like this. I don't know. I don't know how to reproduce this. Um, nope. It still doesn't work. All right. There we go. No two. I think okay. It seems like if two of their joints overlap, maybe that does it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I mean, I think if we put enough tension on it, yeah. Okay. So it seems like if there's enough tension on one of the joints, it doesn't work. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the Unity Physics Engine put us on a watch list. Yeah, I could guess. Um, let's see, can I spawn one there? All right, I think we're making a chain, though. I think this is working. No, it's not. Okay, damn it. Uh, I don't know that it's possible. Uh, sure, let's just spawn a bunch of them inside of each other and see what happens. Oh, that happens. Oh, God. Oh, boy. They <laughs> just turn into a... It's just a mass. Just a mass of limbs. They do eventually just break apart. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't make a chain of them. Just kind of hoping to get a chain and just kind of like swing, you know, swing it back and forth. Hmm. Can we do anything with cubes? Hmm. What happens if you spawn multiple cubes? Oh, they just shove each other apart. Do everything in time scale four. Oh, that's true. It does. Oh my God. Jeez. <laughs> Alright. That's very hard. Wow, look at that. Hmm, I wonder then if we. So hang on. We could just set the time scale to zero. Oh, if we set the time scale to zero, then the physics don't work. Alright. Hmm. 
Uh, okay, well, hang on. Set the time scale to one, right? And we get the light. Because we might be able to do it at time scale four, uh, because there might be enough broken physics. Someone managed to crash it with the following a bunch of rotors, or a bunch of ragdolls, and a bunch of radios. It wasn't only really laggy, it broke my ears. Okay, so let's put you here. Then we lock you in place with a the light. Then you can't move. All right. Now if we turn everything up to, let's say, time scale four, and then we just clip you and clip you and you and you and you and you and you and you. We might be able to do it like this because, oh no, okay, never mind. <laughs> People fall down. All right. <laughs> it's very interesting how they auto adjust. Uh, so weird. His head, yeah, yeah, his head's a little broken. All right. Yeah. Look at that. We can, oh no, it doesn't work. All right. Uh, just want to spawn a bunch of people and see what happens. Oh my god, it explodes. All right, it broke. Oh god, my computer. My computer, <laughs> it's broken. All right. Actually, zero gravity rack dolls. Can you do anything we could do? We could use. Not really. Okay. Actually, you know what we could do? Uh, Unity's lighting engine is also, yeah, I think you're right. What we could do? <laughs> what we could do? <laughs> you could do bowling, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, you could do bowling with the ragdolls. All right. Let's clear everything. All right. So zero G ragdolls, right? Yeah, look at that, you can do bowling. <laughs> uh, I think that's a strike, right? <laughs> Time scale four is dangerous. Turns your graphics card into a murderer. Uh, Alright, let's do let's try to do bowling on G4 or on a time scale four. Alright. So right there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Uh, okay. So can we stack ragdolls? Probably not, right? Probably not, no. Okay. Hmm. All right, I think we've exhausted what we can do with this. Also, is there a quit button or am I crazy? Because I think I have to alt tab out of this, right? Had a secret command, okay. All right. Huh. Okay, so we're an hour into this stream. It's a question of what we're actually going to do, and I don't know. But I think that was kind of fun. Uh, there is no quit button, okay. Enable LSD. Enable LSD. True, false, it does what you think it does. It just adds all of the random like camera effects that we wanted to, the random camera effects that we're adding to the snake games and stuff. Snake game is what I mean to say. Anyway, so it's a question of what we're actually going to do. Uh, so there is the thought I don't want to do the thing with all of the scripts being in one uh, main. I don't want to do the thing with like all of the code being on one line because what that will do is all that does is that just makes it harder to read the code. Like it doesn't it doesn't add a challenge the same way that um, you know writing with no semicolons does. Uh, one thing I was thinking. Um, I don't know how, I don't know how people, like, have you seen the people that play chess but they're blindfolded? I wonder if I could write code while I'm blindfolded. I bet you I could. Um, it's just sort of a question of how you actually get feedback. Like, how would I know, 
if there's an error or something like that, right? <clears throat> Enable LSD, puts the time scale to 10, locks the slider, and adds a new ULSD cube. <laughs> the cube is the rainbow cube. Okay. That's fair. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think, like, I wonder, I wonder how I would get, like, if I were to write code blindfolded, like, would I be able to get feedback somehow? Like, would it be able to tell me that at least there's some kind of error and maybe tell me what kind of error it is? Because then I might be able to do it. It's just a question of, like, how do they do, whenever they play chess blindfolded, how do they actually do that? Like, I've never, I've only seen the videos, I've never actually, like, um, listen to it. Is there like a thing that they do? Also be SM select no. I don't know what the no is for. Wait, wait. Uh, I have a challenge. So there's a couple things. There's Roblox, Pico 8, Scratch, and a couple other things. You know, I've never actually used, um, never actually used Scratch. Now, I think I, I take that back. I think I have used Scratch once or twice, but it hasn't done, or I didn't, you know, just to see what it's about. Try your code in one go, and once you press play, you can't modify it anymore. Eh. I don't know about that. I can write it all in one go. Uh, I mean, I could do that. Like, I don't know. Hmm. What would I write though? That I don't know. What could I write in an hour that I wouldn't be able to? Well, it, I guess it couldn't be an hour. It wouldn't be this stream, but I could do. I could do something like that. Write all the code in one go. I could do that. Um, for like a different stream or something. I can make Pac-Man. I can't do that in an hour. I can't make the whole thing in one hour and it's not LSD, man. Yeah, I was actually thinking about like a Pac-Man clone at one point. But yeah, I gotta... I'll do that. I will do that at some point. Um, let's say, I don't know, I could probably do it for tomorrow's stream where I just write all of the code in one go and we'll see yeah, we just do all, just do everything in one go. I can do that tomorrow, that's for sure. Uh, but right now, I don't think so. Um, so there's a couple things. Uh, so I've never, things I've never played around with. The Flappy Bird. Ah, uh, I don't know about Flappy Bird because see, the thing about Flappy Bird is there's physics. And I'm I think that I'm afraid of is I don't know how to tune the physics. <laughs> LSD bird. Oh my god. Is that just what we're gonna do? We're just gonna be the the channel that makes uh, LSD stuff. I wouldn't mind that. That'd be fine. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what we can do. Let me look at the Pico Eight stuff. Let me see how that looks. Actually, let's look at Scratch Two. Because I haven't Scratch 2.0. Let's have a look at this. So, like, what's the difference? This is it now. <laughs> okay, that's fair. So, what's the difference between Scratch and Scratch 2.0? Uh, so, play that. Welcome to that. Like, what's the actual difference? Operator sensing pen data, the script's motion. Yeah, okay. So what's the difference between Scratch and Scratch 2.0? I actually don't know. Also, that's cool. How are people doing this? Scratch 2.0. So in Scratch, is it possible to create functions? Is that a thing you can do? Because I could do some cool stuff with that. I'm wondering. Method droids has something you and, oh, it has cursed you and you can never, 
and shall now be how do you even do that with that with that weird script is the thing I think I don't think scratch 3.0 is the thing scratch 3.0 is a thing okay I thought scratch 2.0 was a thing so is there scratch 4.0 now okay they're creating it so there's scratch 3.0 Curious what you can do with Scratch. Uh, when is this from? It's from 2019. Okay. So what can you do here? Um, another design chart, somewhat vertical. Design chart. Yeah, I'm very curious what you can do with this. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Is there like, are there functions in this or no? Or am I crazy? Live blocks is one of the categories. Holds procedures. Color coded. It doesn't look like you can, though. Um, change your channel. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I can't do that, but yeah. I don't know, because if there is, we could do something where we create like streams or something. Recreate streams in Scratch. No longer support at all. Interesting. Okay, uh, I don't know, let's do, I don't know, I'm trying to think of what to actually do. Uh, like I was gonna, well, I don't wanna do that. Uh, so there's stuff in Roblox. Um, or there's Lua, there's Moonsharp, damn. I don't know, let's just try to create, I don't know, let's try to do, well actually what happens if we just play on this, I don't know. Um, I think there's something named custom blocks, which are basically functions. Okay, I'll have to look into. I'll look at it at some point. But what we'll do? Hmm. All right. Uh, so what are some other classic sort of games? Right. So there's Scratch, there's Roblox, there's Pico Eight, Snake. I don't really want to do any of that stuff. Uh, so tomorrow, what we'll do? Tomorrow we'll do the thing where we try to write Pac-Man, but we do it in one go. That's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, let me, hmm. I'm going to mess with the newer input stuff is what I'm going to mess with. Uh, well, hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to think of stuff. Um, apologies. I had to uh, thought, thought that things would be more apparent by, uh, by now. I got a little bit sidetracked. Okay, so there is the concept. Yeah, I don't, it's weird because usually I have something that I'm working on in the background, like I have some project that I'm working on, but with the with the snake stuff and um, Pac-Man, it just wasn't, or not Pac-Man, but uh, Asteroids. Like I don't want to, problem is I don't want to touch either one of those because I do those with beginner sort of stream. And I'm not going to be able to do stuff with the Dungeon Crawler Game Jam, so I can't, I don't want to work on stuff for that. Um, and there's not really anything coming up from now that I want to work on. I know there's the Paint Jam. Actually, if you were to make a game in MS Paint, how would that even work? Like, what would you even, really, what would you even do? Like, how could you even make a game in MS Paint? I mean, I guess you could cheat a little bit, but... I think that'd be, yeah. This bullet hell stuff. So let's do, I don't know. Let's do something where we have like snake, but it's like a uh, shooting kind of game, I guess. Not a shooting kind of game, but like, you know, I'm just gonna make something. I know what I'm gonna do. So let's create a square. Uh, so we'll do, make like a snake kind of game where as the snake character gets a little bit longer, uh, like it has, well, 
don't know. We'll make we'll make a thing. That's what we'll do, and then we'll we'll figure out what we're doing afterwards. So, what I want to do is I want to make something with snake-like movement, but I want to make it more like freeform. So this will be the player controller component. Player component there. Yep. Okay. And so this will be what controls like the head of the snake, because what I want is I want it to kind of like slither around. And yeah, and what we'll do is we'll make it so that the segments of the tail uh, just follow this. So let's see what we can do here. Let's say in private void update, uh, what we want is we want uh, the player when they, we want the snake to go forward automatically. And then we want the, um, uh, hmm, I'm trying to think. We want the character to like turn a little bit left and right when, uh, when it uh, gets, uh, I'm trying to think. I want to go forward automatically and then turn left and right when the player hits the left and right keys. So let's say that, uh, do we want to do this with physics or not? Probably, right? So we probably want a serialized field. Oops, serialized field, uh, protected uh, rigid body 2D. So this will be the, let's say, rigid body 2D. Uh, we'll just say this is the rigid body because there's no reason for it to be rigid body 2D. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll say that rigid body dot velocity is equal to, and it's going to be, well, actually, we need to compute the direction first. Usually I do like a protected uh, float, then we'll have like speed or something uh, is equal to 1.0. Then we'll just serialize that so that we can uh, deal with it. And then we usually have uh, velocity. In this case, it's not, or it's going to be uh, is equal to uh, direction. Well, actually, direction is going to be transformed out forward times speed. And then what we can do is we can uh, rotate our transform. We'll say transform dot rotation is going to be equal to, or we're going to just multiply that by quaternion dot Euler, and we'll just get zero 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 zero, and then. We'll get the input dot get axis uh, vertical. And then we'll multiply that by some kind of rotation speed. And then we'll just keep, you know, we'll just basically rotate ourselves and move forward. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we can serialize this. Create a protected, create a protected uh, float rotation speed. Uh, and I think the default will be like, 90, right? I think that'll be fine. All right, I'm going to multiply this by the rotation speed uh, times time delta time. All right, so this should move us forward and we should be able to turn. Uh, this will be the head of the snack. And then we will have, this is the player controller, and then we will also have a rigid body. Uh, 2D, rigid body 2D. Yep, that'll work. <laughs> uh, oh, interesting, right? Because the problem is that it hasn't been assigned. That's fair. All right, so we can just assign this in. We can just assign this in here, and then this has no gravity. That's fair. All right. So now, hmm. Oh, because I'm using transform.forward, it needs to use transform.up. I always forget about that in 2D, is that it's transform.up, not transform.forward. Because transform.forward transform is on the z-axis, whereas transform.up is on the y-axis. So, uh, oh right, I'm getting the vertical axis. I need the horizontal axis. Uh, so let's say horizontal. Horizontal, yes. Okay. Let's check this out. All right, so, hmm, that's interesting. Seems quite slow. I think otherwise it's fine. I think that's the kind of control system I want, though. And so the idea is going to be that whenever we spawn in tail segments, they're just going to track the player. 
So we'll add, or track the uh, segment in front of them. So we'll say that this is the tail component. And there's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know what it would be. Say private void uh, update. And we can say um, protected float, or not float, but a uh, transform. Uh, transform, which is the target. Uh, target, something like that. Then in the update, uh, so we can serialize this. Well, actually, no. Um, let's make this public, and we'll just set the target here. What we'll say is, say if not target, then we're going to return. So if there's no target, we're just going to do nothing. Otherwise, we'll say uh, transform.position is equal to vector3, let's say lerp, from our position to the target that transform dot position, uh, and we're going to do that uh, target dot position. We're going to do that by 0.1f. Then we're going to say transform dot rotation is equal to uh, quaternion dot lerp. Lerp from our transform dot rotation to target dot rotation by about that, something like that. All right, let's see what that actually ends up being like. Uh, so what we need to do is, in the player component, we need to have a serialized field. We need to do protected uh, game object. And then this is going to be the tail prefab. And what we're going to do is we're going to spawn these as children of whatever parent object we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, if if input dot get key down get key down let's say key code dot q and we'll just do this for testing. I will have a protected void spawn tail segment. And what this will do is this will instantiate in a tail segment or tail prefab at we're going to do that. Um, I want to get the last uh, tail segment, which is going to be equal to uh, game object, or no, sorry, not game object, transform dot parent dot last sig uh, dot last sib uh, last sibling. Uh, or hmm. so it's going to be like transform dot parent. It's going to be get child. We're going to get child at uh, the segments. Segments. Segment. <clears throat> Need to get the transform.parent.child count. And so we're going to do that. We're going to get the child at uh, segments minus one, which is the last child. I don't know that you can get that any easier way. And then we're going to say that this is, we're going to spawn it at the last segment dot transform dot position plus last segment dot transform dot backward or dot forward. Uh, we're going to subtract that. So basically we will get the vector three of the last, we'll get the facing of the last uh, transform or the last tail segment and we'll go back one unit and we'll spawn it there. Then we'll spawn it at uh, last tail segment dot transform dot rotation facing whatever that's facing. I don't think this is gonna work but maybe it will. I don't know. Let's hope. And yeah I think that'll that'll work. Uh, actually we need to say uh, segment is equal to that. And then what we need to do is we need to say segment dot set parent, or sorry, dot transform uh, dot uh, set parent as our transform dot parent, just so that they share a parent. And that way, 
Now what we can do is we can A, duplicate you, make you a tail segment. We can remove the rigid body because we don't need it. We can also remove the player controller because we don't need that. But this will be the tail, and then it won't have a target. Uh, so the target actually needs to be uh, the segment uh, dot target. Ah, right. We want this to be a tail component, and we'll say dot target is equal to last tail segment dot game object. Uh, hmm. Is it equal to last tail segment? Okay. Okay, so I guess it takes a transform. That's fair. I think that's how I coded it. All right, and so this can be now a prefab. Uh, so it will be in assets, create new, and then we'll create a prefabs folder. Put that in there. I think that'll be fine. We can delete it. All right, now let's create a parent. This is our snake. Put that at 000. zero. It doesn't really matter where it is, but as long as it's 000. zero. Okay, and so if we assign the tail prefab here, I want to see what happens. Uh, interesting. It's not actually creating them. Why is that? Oh, right, because I need to actually call the code. Pro tip, actually call the code whenever you, uh, whenever you write the code. And I want to see what this will do. I'm very curious. Yeah, that's not quite the effect that I had hoped for. Well, actually, trying to make something similar to Snake. Uh, let's say the speed is 3, right? Of course, you zip around. Uh-oh. Uh it went off screen. So yeah, we can create a bunch of... Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right, Snake. Yeah, I don't know, I kind of like that effect. I don't know, what do you think? I think it looks cool, it looks almost like a dragon. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, obviously we need to resize some stuff. But yeah, I think the size, I think the actual thing is kind of neat. I was wondering if we could do something where we have this moving around, but it shoots. I don't know. Don't know how that would work. Of course, we can always make it longer. Make the infinity symbol. If we make it long enough, of course. Aha. Uh -huh. Very mesmerizing, actually. Well, that's really cool. It looks like a long bus. I actually think it looks it looks very much like a dragon to me, actually, with all the scales kind of sliding past each other like that. I think that's really cool. I especially like that it's like not perfect either. I, don't know, I think that's really neat looking. It's probably very inefficient, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know, that looks, it's just very mesmerizing to watch, and I don't really know why. Cat has joined us? Oh cool, another viewer, I like that. Tell your cat to register for uh, Twitch and, you know, don't watch on the same monitor, always get, you know, get another, uh, get another computer as it were. Wow, I really like that. I wonder if we could make, um, I wonder if we could make that look even cooler somehow. Yeah, I really like that. I think it looks really neat. I mean, of course, it's very inefficient, but it's still... I don't know. I really like it. Uh, how inefficient is it, actually? It's not that inefficient. It looks like a modern snake. It really does, actually. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what we can do to really make it look neat. Uh, I know that we could probably make the segments like get smaller over the distance, right? They just kind of resized. 
Uh, okay. <clears throat> so what we could do is whenever we spawn a tail segment, we could go through and resize all the segments. So if we resize, okay, how do, if you're gonna say add neon colors and make it look like it's on LSD, you're, you're right, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Acid has joined the chat. <laughs> all right, so let's go through all the segments and try to make them um, uh, different sizes based on how close they are to the head. So let's say for each uh, var segment, oh, well, it wouldn't be var, it'd be actually transform. Uh, transform child in uh, transform.parent and transform.parent. Actually, um, we can make, so this is where expression defined members are kind of cool. We can do protected uh, snack uh, is equal to transform.parent. Oh, really? Can we not? Oh, right, because it's, uh, uh, it'd be transform, right? Uh, transform.parent. So you can say for each child in snack. Uh, for each segment in SNCC. What we will do is we need to get the child count. So say for uh, segments, uh, segments is equal to uh, SNCC dot child count, right? And so then this should iterate through the segments in order so if we want the smallest segment to be, let's say, whatever the smallest is, protected snack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's about right. Protected snack. Transform snack. Uh, so the smallest is going to be 0.3f, uh, which is floating point, and then the largest is going to be uh, obviously 1.0. So what we need to do is we need to say that the segment size, segment.transform. Uh, local scale is going to be equal to, by the way, you're gonna lurk a lot. Typing on mobile is a pain. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I was watching Vulcan on on mobile and it's it's very hard to type. All right, so local scale is equal to the largest minus the smallest, so that's the difference. No, wait, it's the smallest plus the largest minus the smallest, that's the difference. And then we're going to multiply that, or no, we want to divide that by the number of segments. And then, actually, we don't want to do this at all. Uh, we don't want to loop through these. We want to loop through <laughs> buffering has joined the chat. Yeah. Uh, so actually, we want to do uh, very rare. Very rarely do I do this. But this is going to be the index uh, is 0. Uh, index less than segments. And index plus plus. Very rarely do I do this. And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to set the index to 1 because we don't want to resize the head. And so the segment is going to be equal to the snack, uh, oh yeah, snack dot uh, get child uh, at the index, and that's the segment. And so the size is going to be equal to that times uh, the index. And I think that's right. And then we want all of this times vector three dot one. <clears throat> vector three dot one, I think. Yeah. So I believe all of that is correct, and I think that's how you resize all the segments. And so whenever we, we're going to spawn a tail segment, and then we'll resize the tail segments. All right. So this should make it get smaller as it gets longer. Uh, whoops. Uh, nope, that does the exact opposite of what we want. Interesting. It's using a for loop. Yeah, I very rarely use for loops. So why did that happen? Uh, it's 
not this, but then it must be 1 minus this. It must be equal to that. It's good as it is. Eh, I'm not convinced about that one. Um, so it needs to not be this. It needs to be index. So it needs to be segments minus index. That it looks too derpy. Like what? What? What is it gonna do? It looks too derpy. Oh my god! Like I get the sentiment, but like it looks really derpy. Uh, hold on. Let's see what this looks like first, and then if this doesn't look good, we might go back. Cause I'm not. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of this. I don't know. Let's just look at this for a minute, and if we don't like it, we can always change it back. I think it just looks too derpy though. Like, I don't know how someone's brain would parse that. Uh, I do like this though. I think it looks really cool. I don't know, I really like the way this looks. I mean, we could add some wings and it would be like a proper dragon, wouldn't it? But I mean, let's, okay. So let's uh, resize. If we're gonna keep it the other way though, we'd have to resize the head as well. So let's go like that. So if we did this, then what would this look like? That looks super weird. Wait, what? Keep the head like really tiny, or keep the head huge, and then the, like the body be really tiny? I don't know. This just looks weird. Like I don't know how you. I don't know what this would be. Like what kind of creature would this be? <laughs> what kind of creature would it be though? <clears throat> like even if it had the correct sized head, like what kind of creature would it be? Anyway, we could fix it, but like. Again, what kind of creature would it be? <laughs> but like worms don't. Problem is, is that like it it has like a neck almost. Like it doesn't. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make any sense to. Like it's not even a worm. Like because worms don't do this. They don't get thicker as they. Like they don't get thicker near the back. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know, I just, I can't, I just don't know what this would be. Like, what kind of creature would this be that would have a head like this? And also, what would you do with the rest of the body? Like, I don't understand. <clears throat> yeah, I just can't, I don't know, I just can't see it. I could see it either of the other ways. Yeah, but like it at least makes the but the objects themselves make some level of sense, right? Like the asteroids make sense that they're the way they are, but like this, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not convinced with this. Like, I mean, I think it looks cool, but like, I don't know. <clears throat> Like what kind of creature would this be? Like that's that's the part that I'm not really sure about. Hmm. <laughs> anyway. I mean, I wanna keep it if it makes sense, but like it doesn't make sense, that's the problem. Like I, I wanna keep what makes sense. It's a big brain thick worm. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta think about it. No, I think it looked cool with I think it looked cool the other way. I mean I could see either of the other ways being a possibility, but like I don't know. 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll make like a follow camera really quick and we'll think about it. But like, I don't know. Still not, I'm not sold on it. Unless there's like something interesting that it could be, some kind of creature that it could be. Uh, so this will be a follow camera component. Yeah, unless there's some like creature that it could be, I'm not convinced. Uh, so let's say this is private void update. <laughs> it's, a, it's a worm, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, well, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to like think through it, but like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's say the transform or the transform position. Uh, is equal to vector three lerp from transform position to uh, target dot position. Uh, target dot position, and then we'll have zero dot zero one f. So like that. Also, I'll throw an edge. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, let's say that this is the camera. We'll put this at zero, zero, zero. Then this needs to be at zero, zero, and then minus 10. <clears throat> put a follow camera component. So follow the head of the snake, or the snack, whatever we want to call it. So yeah, now we have the thing there. Uh, what we can do with this is we can one, uh, put the rigid body thing in fixed update, and then we can also uh, put the camera thing in late update. So I think this actually needs to be in late update, and that might fix it, not later update, but late update. All right. <clears throat> Does this fix it? Nope, I think that just made it worse. That most certainly looked it worse. Made it worse. Now it looks like a Slither IO ripoff. Maybe. Uh, this might need to go in fixed update. Or no, it needs to go in late update. That's correct. It's just I think that this needs to be in fixed update. Actually, the camera might need to be in fixed update too. Uh, that might need to be a thing. Might be wrong, but I think it might. Might be, it's one of the two. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. Uh, so on key down doesn't work in, well, it probably does, but not very well. Uh, update. Let's do that. All right. Yeah, okay, that's I think a little bit better. I think agar.io, one single script, no semicolon in one line. I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm gonna mute that. Oh, is this like that circle thing? Sure, whatever. Oh, this goes towards that, okay. I don't remember the mechanics of this, but yeah, okay. I don't know, how does that work? Hmm. I mean, like, I don't know if this, I don't know if you could make this in a single script. Oh boy. <laughs> the Qing Dynasty. Oh, uh, that's funny. Uh, what does that do? Oh, it's that's what that does. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if you could do that with a single script, actually. <clears throat> I mean, making games with a single script might actually... That might actually be a challenge that's uh, worthy of doing, but I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Not hugely... Um... Not hugely sold on this. Uh, we need to actually change the lerping to be in the fixed update, and that'll fix it. But like, yeah, I'm not too sold on that. 
I think there's other things that can be done with this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to think about it. Pebble we can fix, of course. If we can fix this, if we just put this in fixed update, it'll work. Should look a little bit better at least. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Why is that happening? Huh. That's very interesting. Why is that doing that? Oh, it's because it's not for... Oh. Interesting. <laughs> it's because it was going too slow. It wasn't... Right, because this will, this only works because the frame rate is so high. That's why it, that's why it only worked. Okay. But now if we do this, it's better? Yeah, it's better. Okay. <clears throat> now this will work consistently on every machine, but that was weird. Yeah, okay. That looks better. Okay. I don't know, I'm still not sold on the on the snake getting like super thin like that. Cause I don't know, I think the other the other way of doing it I think is just better. Yeah, we could have a thing where we're like a dragon flying around. But then I don't know why. I don't know. I'm trying to think. A couple different things could happen. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just really like it the other way. <laughs> I'm trying to think here. What can we do? Uh, it's not this. It's segments minus index. Yeah, I don't know. I think that what is... Uh... Yeah, you're right. There's no such thing as a snake. I don't know. That was that was a spelling error. I mean, it's weird that um, that Unity doesn't actually tag that as a spelling error. I mean, that seems like a bug, right? It should obviously call it a snake. Like everybody knows what those are. Nobody knows what snakes actually are. It's not. They're not. They're just mythological creatures, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm really a fan of it like this. I mean, yeah, it does look like a slither IO clone. I get like I get that, but like. I don't know. I think if you put some wings on it, I think it'd look kind of cool. You could pretend that like like it's a dragon that's kind of like uh, you know flying around or something. I don't know. The problem with having a game that would like take place in the sky is that uh, you wouldn't really have any way of adding obstacles to it. We can always change it back. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, I think that this just looks better. Like, just genuinely looks better. I think if you really put, like, um, like some kind of scale texture on it, I think it would look really nice. <laughs> Make it a setting. Okay, I mean, yeah, it could be a setting. That you could invert it. I don't know, I think it would just look weird, though. <laughs> uh, plus, I need to invert the uh, left and right here. <clears throat> That's what I had meant to do. So it needs to be minus horizontal. Which I'm curious why it has to be minus horizontal. I actually don't know. Yeah, so something like this. <coughs> but yeah, we can at least make it a setting. I don't know, I really like this. I just, I like the way that it looks. It's not exactly, you know, efficient, of course, but it still works. Hmm. But yeah, my theory was that you could do something like this, and then every, like, you'd have guns for some reason. Like, I can't think of why you'd have guns. You could have, like, mech, it could be, like, mechanical dragons or something. That would be kind of cool. Then like every once in a while you'd have like a gun on the segment, so like the bigger the dragon got, the more more guns you would have. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. What are your thoughts, percentage percentage guy? Hmm. Say wait, wait. Hmm. Hmm.
version of rerun. Uh, okay, let me see what rerun is about. Uh, hmm. What is this about? Sure. Let's see if there's a. Hmm. Okay. You have a sword, yeah, and then. You get a sword, okay. I don't understand. You, do you just get a sword and that's just it? Action, parkour, sword, and power ups. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it, I don't really entirely get it. It looks just like. I'll have to play it, but like. Yeah, okay. I'll have to look at it. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I don't know, probably not tomorrow. Get a sword and kill people, also rewind. Also rewind and parkour, okay. So the rewind stuff... <clears throat> yeah, I'll probably play it then and just look at it. But yeah, there's reasons that I want to do this as well. Um, for stuff that's coming up, of course. Uh, but yeah, I think... I think I like this concept. I think what it's going to be, I think it's going to be like mechanical dragons with uh, guns on their back. <laughs> right, snake with the snake. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, how do we make the camera large enough that that'll actually work? Uh, can we do this at 10? 50. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's see if we can get the tail in the actual right position. And so what we'd have to do, I go up a little bit. Uh, so we just go over and then, oh wait, that's not how you make an S, hang on. Trying to think about how you, I don't know, you make an S, like, ah, damn it, make an S, like, like that. Problem is, is that we can't really turn fast enough. Um, it's, it's really hard to both uh, coordinate uh, creating new things yeah uh, it's hard to create it's both hard it's hard to coordinate making new tail segments and also um, I can't turn fast enough to actually do it that's the problem that was probably the best that I could do um, yeah I don't know it's very hard to uh, well, actually, we could start from the other side, right? So we could go, and we could go up and around. So that's the S. Then we'd have to go down and also up at the same time. So you have N. And the problem is like the E, because you could do like that, but yeah, it, the problem is that the letters are going to get completely destroyed just because of the way the the lerping works because it's not perfect but yeah okay it's very hard to do anyway uh so tomorrow we'll work on the concept of writing pac-man all at once without any kind of um we'll just write pac-man all in one go without any kind of debugging and see if i can do that because i think i can uh, i don't think it's that hard yeah, I'll try that tomorrow, and then I'll work on this a little bit, too. 
But yeah, uh, I'm going to call the stream here. Uh, thank you for watching, Percentage Guy. Uh, for people watching the VODs, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.